Hi, this is uh, Sir David, the Bard, and uh, I wanted to do a, um, a report on the Mormons and the Negroes. Now, see, I can say Negroes because I'm 65, and that's what we call them. Well, we also call them niggers, but you know, no one calls anybody those things anymore, and they were certainly inappropriate then, and they're inappropriate now. And I want to make sure that the record is clear. The Mormons never hated the black man. The Mormons always accepted the black man. The Mormons always treated the black man with dignity, honor, and respect. And all men are created equal, and we're all God's children. Now, let me uh, read to you here. There's a gentleman. Uh, he, he says, <laughs> it's, a, it's the title of the... the page is Mormon and Negroes, Doctrines of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and it looks like President Obama's brother is uh, there in picture. Love one another, a discussion on blacks and the priesthood. Few topics are more sensitive than that of skin color. This complicated subject defines how we interact as a society and as families and even how we interact with God. Here's where the church stands. <laughs> this black guy, he's funny and he's good, he's good. Ah, being black is a complex reality for many people. <laughs> if you look in a mirror, there's a chance you're going to see you're black. <laughs> Having dark skin itself isn't a sin. Hey, that's good. I like the Mormon church saying that. But it is often an individ indicator of your past sins. So your black skin doesn't mean you are a sinful person. It means you were a sinful person <laughs> before you came here with the black skin. Even though individuals are sometimes cursed with dark skin because of their sins committed in this lifetime, others may not have sinned in this life. Those who were less valiant in the war in heaven are born with dark skin. <laughs> That's the official that's the official doctrine of the Mormon Church. I don't apologize. The Mormon Church should apologize. Here is a collection of uh, quotes and conversations. Uh, I'm going to skip a little bit of his dialogue here. And let's just go ahead and do some quotes from the prophets of the Mormon Church. From the prophets. Ah, uh, Here it is. Uh, this one here is uh, the discussion on civil rights, especially over the last 20 years, has drawn some very sharp lines. It has blinded the thinking of some of our own people, I believe. They have allowed their political affiliations to color their thinking to some extent. And then, of course, they have been persuaded by some of the arguments that they have been put forth, or that by that some of the arguments that have been put forth. We who teach in the church certainly must have our feet on the ground. <laughs> and our head in our butts. Now, I just put that part in. Okay, feet on the ground. Okay, feet on the ground. Uh, and not be led astray by the philosoph uh, philosophies of men on this subject. This is Apostle Mark E. Peterson. Race problems as they affect the church, con con convention of teachers and religion on the college level, Brigham Young University, 1954. Now, 48 for 95. The bard was five years old. Okay, blacks. Back to the beginning, the curse. Not only was Cain called upon to suffer, but because of his wickedness, he became the father of an inferior race. L let me hit that again. Inferior race. A curse placed upon him and that curse has been continued through his lineage and must do so while time endures. So the blacks are not going to turn white and delights them. Only, only the brown skinned people, the blacks are stuck with the, the, the dark skin. Millions of souls have come into this world cursed with a black skin and have been denied the privilege of the priesthood and the fullness of the blessings of the gospel. These are the descendants of Cain. And you can find this 
in the document, uh, The Way to Perfection, pages 101 and 102. <laughs> the pages, uh, Ways of Protection. Okay. Here's Brigham Young. Okay. And right, let's see. This sentiment was also echoed by Brigham Young, the second prophet, John Taylor, the third prophet, and Wilford Woodruff, the fourth, Spencer W. Kim, uh, Kimball, and Bruce R. McConkie, and even, according to Brigham Young, Joseph Smith, the original prophet of our faith. Okay. And God caused the cursing to come upon them, yea, even a sore cursing, because of their iniquity. For behold, they had hardened their hearts against him. They had become like unto a flint. Wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they might not be enticing unto my people, the Lord God did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. And that's in Second Nephi 5.21. Now, they weren't as valiant in the war in heaven. I don't know. They could have been breakdancing. I don't know. They could have been carrying baggage, shining shoes picking cotton. I don't know why the Mormons think that, but they uh, in Second Nephi, their Book of Mormon, uh, it does say that. It cannot be doubted then that the prophets taught that blacks were accursed. We understand that this doctrine is unpalatable, but truth is truth and we cannot apologize for it. So this black guy, is, <laughs> he's a funny dude. He's funny. Okay, a wicked posterity, but surely the Lord would not condemn many unborn souls simply because their ancestors were wicked indeed he would not modern prophets have also explained why people continue to be born black i think it's because they have black genes and black parents but that's just a wild guess on my part central to the doctrines of the lds church is that we lived as spirits before we were born in this pre-existence we had the ability to ch choose just as we do now those who are born black were less valiant in the pre-existence and so are born cursed. <laughs> I just want to clear, clear the pages here. The Mormon Church has always loved the black people. Oh, let's see here. There's the uh, Joseph Fielding Smith, Doctrines of Salvation, page 61. There is a reason why one man is born black with other, uh, and with other disadvantages. So being born black is a disadvantage. While another is born white with great advantages. The reason is we once had an estate before we came here and were obedient more or less to the laws that were given unto us. Those who were faithful in all things, there received, they received greater blessings here and those who were not faithful received less. Now that's Joseph Fielding Smith on the blacks. Okay, now here's Bruce R. McConkie. He doesn't mix words. He, uh, he tells the truth. Negroes in this life are denied the priesthood. Under no circumstances can they hold this delegation of authority from the Almighty. This is in Abraham 1, 20 through 27. The gospel message of salvation is not carried affirmantly to them. Negroes are not equal with other races where the receipt of certain spiritual blessings are concerned, particularly the priesthood and the temple blessings that flow from them. But this inequality is not of man's origin. <laughs> Jesus hates black people. It is the Lord's doing. It is based on his eternal laws of justice and grows out of the lack of spiritual valiance of those uh, concerned in their first estate. That's Mormon Doctrine 1966. That's when I graduated from high school. That's uh, pages uh, 527 through 528. It's not a sin to be black, but God forbids interracial marriage. Now, here, here's Brigham Young. <laughs> he loved the black people. Uh, you know, he thought everyone ought to own one. Um, here we go. Shall I tell you the law of God in regard to the African race? Now, he's saying, <laughs> this is what Jesus told him. <laughs> not only to have 57 wives, but if the white man who belongs to the chosen seed mixes his blood with the seed of Cain, if a white person marries a black, the penalty under the law of God is death on the spot. 
<laughs> no jury, no prosecutor, and no defense attorney. You just kill them. <laughs> this is Brigham Young. God, talk about an asshat. This will always be so. Well, it's not now, but Brigham, none of his prophecies or Joseph's came true, so here's another one. Uh, this is Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 10, pages uh, 110. Wilford Woodruff uh, reiterated the importance of keeping our seed clean. So if you mix your sperm in the vagina of a black woman, it becomes dirty or it's not clean anymore. And if any man mingles his seed with the seed of Cain, the only way he could get rid of it or have salvation would to become forward and have his head cut off and spill his blood upon the ground. It would also take the life of his children. Wilford Woodruff Journal. Now, I don't know if he's talking about the big head or the little head. <laughs> it has to be cut off. Probably from the Mormons, it has to be both. Okay, here's another one, uh, and if you just skim over those quotes, uh, read this one from Mark E. Peterson uh, more carefully. Nowhere has the position of the LDS Church been stated more clearly. Quote, I think I have read enough to give you an idea of what the Negro race is after. He is not just seeking the opportunity of sitting down in a cafe where white people eat. Now, that's kind of convenient. I remember in the 60s, I went down south, and it said no blacks everywhere, everywhere. Uh, so it's not just that they want to eat. He isn't just trying to ride on the same streetcar or the same Pullman car with white people. Well, a little transportation helps, but they don't need that either. It isn't that he just denies to go to the same theater as the white people. I don't know. I guess black people in a the theater uh, somehow... <laughs> make it dirty I don't know from this and other interviews I have read it appears that the Negro seeks absorption with the white race he will not be satisfied until he achieves it by inter marriage that is his objective and we must face it we must not allow our feelings to carry us away <laughs> there's a statement <laughs> Every Mormon should read. We must not allow our feelings to carry us away. They've been carried away in this space a long time. Nor must we feel so sorry for the Negroes that they will open our arms and embrace them with everything we have. Equality? Certainly not. <laughs> Remember the little statement that we used to say about sin. First, we pity. Then we endure. Then we embrace. Unquote. Now, the, the Mormon church had never had anything against the black. Never. They're always equal and loving and kind. Every man is our, our, you know, God's son and daughter. While we harbor no disrespect for Negroes, the Lord's position on mixed marriage is clear. We have softened our stance somewhat since Brigham Young and Wilford Woodruff declared that the penalty was death principally because the church no longer authorizes corporal punishment. But the law of God remains as these quotes and so many others that we have omitted uh, demonstrate. God is merciful. Mormons aren't, but maybe God is. Fortunately, God can help those who were born black overcome their skins of darkness and become white and delightsome once again. Uh, the curse can be removed. Both Brigham Young and Spencer W. Kimball, both prophets of the Mormon Church, among others, spoke of this miracle of miracles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if a white person uh, or a black person changes to a white person, that is a miracle of miracles. Oh, God. Children, get the phone, please. I have no, uh, no friends. Um, President Kimball even saw this happening among the Lamanites, Native Americans, after they were brought into the white foster homes in his words now this used to be a big thing uh, with Mormons they would rent Indians <laughs> off the reservations in Utah bring them into their home teach them English put them in an uh, English speaking school and um, they would turn white now if you don't believe that let me read to you what the prophet said quote the day of the Lamanites is nigh for years they have been growing delightsome the children in the home placement program, Indian placement, in Utah are often lighter than their brothers and sisters in the Hogan's on the reservation. <laughs> uh, 
there was the doctor in Utah City who for two years had had an Indian boy in his home uh, who stated that he was some shades lighter than the younger brother just coming into the program from the reservation. These young members of the church are changing to whitesome and delightsomeness. Spencer W. Kimball, Prophet of the Mormon Church, The Improvement Era, December 1960, page 923. Uh, let me see. It is unfortunate so many black members of the church have not yet become white and delightsome. <laughs> this black guy is funny. We ask members to be patient and not to judge because of their curse. They are slower to learn and slower to repent, but God remains ever ready to accept them when they turn to Him. For those black members who are reading this, we urge you to fight against the cursing that God placed on you at birth. You were perhaps born black, but that doesn't mean that you can't live a life of fulfillment and activity in the church, and I'm putting in here, and maybe turn white. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh, God. If you have any doubts, if you have any doubts that the Mormons are, have been and are discriminatory uh, at um, Obama, uh, yeah, Obama's uh, convention, there were a couple of uh, Mormons who were throwing peanuts uh, into the crowd. And when the security caught up with them, the, the Mormons said, this is how we feed monkeys. The Mormon Church had the largest amount of ethnical, legal, hateful tweets when Obama won on Twitter. Negro. Black man. Nigger. The world is lost. We still have people. Now, I'm, I'm in Australia. Okay, I'm down here in Sydney area today. Uh, and Bogota tomorrow. You never heard, heard of Bogota, Australia? Hey, there's a small town. Anyway, we've had some uh, Utahns flying their flags upside down. Now, I don't know if that's an IQ test. <laughs> and in Utah, it could be. But it's because Obama, the black man, is taking us over the cliff and trying to intermarry with our white women. So... If the black people are not tap dancing, <laughs> doing a blackface on a TV, and carrying baggage and shoe shining, they should not be asking for unemployment. <laughs> and to have one of them as president and beating the shit out of a white and delightsome Melchizedek priesthood holder is not God's will. But the Mormons can't figure out whose will is it. <laughs> the people have spoken. Are we all uh, citizens of the devil? Well, if we are, the Mormons are on the wrong planet now, aren't they? So anyway, if uh, you want to tap dance, carry baggage, that's your business. Uh, you will turn white and delightsome. I've noticed that Obama's turned a little bit gray, so maybe, maybe we'll turn the TV on and him and his kids will either have all of their heads cut off or they'll all be white and delightsome. <laughs> I hope I live long enough to see that. I <laughs> love the Mormons. Thanks.